Hello out there, you wonderful peasants. Kingless Jester back again. Today, we're going to be doing another tier list ranking. And this ranking is going to be something that is near and dear to my heart. Guys, this is going to be a book series. This book series is none other than the great will of time. Oh, man, what can I say about the will of time? The will of time is amazing. It's, com it's comprised of about 14 books. Yes, you could say 15, if you count New Spring, which is a uh, book that's kind of like a prequel, but it was written halfway through the series. So it's comprised of 14 to 15 books. These books are amazing. It's a journey of a young boy who practically becomes a man, a savior, a champion, everything all above. He does what he has to do to pretty much save the universe. And along this journey, he's accompanied by his two best friends, uh, two other girls from his village, and uh, just a cast of wonderful characters that you just fall in love with. So, uh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be something I'm really going to truly enjoy. This book, man, I just can't say enough about it. It's wonderful. All right, let's jump right into it, guys. So, first off, we will go right down the line. First book, The Eye of the World. Man, for the longest time, this was my favorite. I, I love this book. And it still is. I mean... It's up there. I, I would put the eye, eye of the world for me is going to be S. It's it's a great book. I mean, it's one of my favorites for sure. Top three, I, I think. All right. <clears throat> I, mean, you, I mean, you have just the introduction of Rand, his friends. I mean, and right away you're thrust, thrust into adventure. So, I mean, they, they have to escape danger. I mean, it's just, it's almost, it's truly... It's like a horror story. I mean, it, it really is. At, at times, it's quite frightening. <clears throat> it's, it's, oh, man, filled with, like, action and adventure. I mean, really, really a touching story. <clears throat> so we'll move on to book number two. Book number two is The Great Hunt. So The Great Hunt is one that I was not big on. I know a lot of people love this book. I mean, it, it is it is a good book, but I mean, I, I think I, I think for me it's moved up in my eyes. It would be an A now. It used to be probably falling under a B, but after my last reread, I I really I really liked it. I liked it a lot more than I um, once did. For some reason, it's kind of didn't re resonate with me as much the first time, but the uh, second go around, I really did like it. <clears throat> so I'd stick that at A. I mean, you have just this is where the gang splits up. You know, the classic, hey, we're all going to go our separate ways and try to achieve, uh, you know, a goal. Pretty much, it's kind of like playing cat and mouse or chase. Like they're just essentially all chasing one another. But uh, I mean, you got a lot of good stuff with Loyal and Rand. I mean, there's some spooky scenes. <clears throat> there's a scene where Rand, which is the main protagonist, he's the dragon reborn. There's a scene where he gets caught in a, what they call a bubble evil. So while he's caught in this bubble evil, he pretty much replays this, like, one scene multiple times. Like just the way Robert Jordan wrote it in the book, he like uses uh, the phrase "flicker" and he uses it a ton. He's just flicker, 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 just to symbolize that you know something wonky's happening to Rand, and that he's kind of like er, rewind. Let's start back over to a certain point. Er, rewind. So it just plays out like that for a while, and it truly is creepy. I mean, so the Great Hunt. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff at the end with uh, them uh, playing games. You know, it's like kind of like I don't know. It's like a murder mystery 
that was just the whole setting. Like they're all like in a mansion type setting, like playing politics. You know, this is this really really cool. <clears throat> all right, so the third book. All right, so the the Dragon Reborn is the title of this book. This book is in fact my favorite book, without a doubt. The, this is. Out of out of all the books, this is my favorite. I don't know why. <clears throat> it's, it's odd because it doesn't even have the perspective of Rand. He's like POV, hardly any in this book. I mean, he's got very little point of view scenes. But uh, and 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 the story is practically his party chasing him. Like he's decided he's going to go off and do something, and they're pretty much chasing after him, trying to catch up to him. And that's the whole entire book, practically. Uh, there's some really cool scenes with Matt. Matt's uh, a character that everyone loves. He's a lot of people's favorite character. Oh, I love him, too. He's a dumb. Rand, the Dragon Reborn, is probably my favorite, to be honest. But Matt is, would be a close... I mean, Perrin's awesome, too. I mean, they're all great. But Matt, oh, man, there's some scenes where... He wakes up from being sick for a really long time, you know, and he stumbles into a, the training ground. He has to battle uh, these brothers, Galad and Godwin, who are like great, you know, great swordsmen. They they really depict them to be like, man, these these young cats are kicking ass and beating all the trainers' butts, and he ends up fighting the both of them. You know, they have training swords and he uses his quarter staff. He whips their butt. And this is like after he's been sick for, you know, a long time. Like he's been like he's gone through, you know, hell and back and he still manages to kick it, kick their ass. And I mean and he just further does even more crazy. You know, this is the the book where he pretty much gets his luck, you know, it, it's, you, you find out that he's super, super lucky, and things kind of always go in his favor, this is Matt I'm talking about, and yeah, I mean, this, this Dragon Reborn is a great book, and, and Rand kind of reinforces that he is the Dragon Reborn, this is the book that he kind of realizes himself, all right, I truly am, like, he starts to believe in himself, and he kind of proves that he is as well. The next book, book four, Shadow Rising, is a lot of people's favorite book. People, this this tends to be a lot of people's favorite, and it's good. I mean, they they like the IL history, but it, it I mean, I, I'll stick it at A. I mean, I really do. Like they've got some really good stuff, but it just isn't the Dragon Reborn or even the Eye of the World for me. But I mean, it's good. I like it. All right, so book five, Fires of Heaven. Fires of Heaven is a good book. I, I really do like it. It's got a bunch of, uh, I mean, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but a lot of crazy stuff happens in this book. And uh, we'll move on from there. <laughs> I know some people probably haven't read the series or, or maybe are reading it now. All right, now this is a crazy book, Lord of Chaos. I mean, the title says it all. This book right here has probably one of the best chapters out of the series. It's, I mean, do my as well. That's all I have to say. Yeah, this book uh, really grew on me as well. Second go around, I liked it like even more than the first time. I mean, a lot of stuff happens in this book. I'll just go ahead and say, in this book, all right, spoilers, Rand flat out gets captured. He gets taken hostage, and he manages to break loose. And let's just say some shit goes down. <laughs> that's as far as I'll go. All right, so that's uh, Lord of Chaos. All right, so that's book six. Book seven is Crown of Swords. Crown of Swords is actually another. I I really do like Crown of Swords. I mean it. It's a good book. I mean it. It stands strong with me. I don't have any like. I remember reading these. I'm like, wow, man, he's just knocking these out of the park. Like, 
everyone's a killer, man. I mean, everyone's good. Yeah, I'd say I'd say it'd be B. I'd say B for sure. I mean, it's a great book for sure. B's not a bad spot to be in. All right, so after Crown of Swords, that's number seven. We have Path of Daggers, which is number eight. Now, this is where some honestly would say book seven, Crown of Swords, is where it starts. But a lot of people say book eight, from book eight to ten, is like a slog. It's the, you know, they start to slow down. And some would, some could agree. I mean, you could, you could say that. It, it, it may, that may be the case. But, <clears throat> once again, I thought book eight was a pretty good book. I mean, I, I really did, I really did like it. I mean, Rand's doing some crazy stuff. <laughs> I mean, everybody, and this, this is kind of like the whole party. They're all, I mean, pretty much from book th four they start doing this, but from, they're just off doing with their own stuff. I mean, everybody, Gwen's doing what she needs to do. You got Naive, Naive doing, doing, doing her own thing. Matt, just, gosh, going around the world. <laughs> I'd say this is C. <clears throat> Alright, so then we have book nine, which is Winter's Heart. Winter's Heart is a book that I like. I think Winter's Heart is a good book. I wouldn't even say... I mean, it has a lot of good stuff go down in this book. So for me, Winter's Heart would be B. I, I just think there's really good things happening. All right, now, this is my least favorite Will of Time book, Crossroad Twilight. Oh, Crossroads Twilight. Uh, what can I say? Man, I just remember when I first read this book, just being like, it's nothing but dialogue. The whole book is just people talking, just conversations. And it's like, not even with the main characters, it's with these side antagonist villains, like, you know, conspiring against the whole party. And it's just, what it goes on for the majority of books, just dialogue and dialogue. And it's a lot of it feels like, senseless. And then on a second reread, it it didn't feel like that necessary. I mean it was it was pretty terrible still, but uh I did catch a bunch of stuff that I'm like, okay, yeah, you do need to know that. But this is the worst book for me and I'll go ahead and say it's D. But it is worth reading. I mean I wouldn't advise skipping any any of these books. I mean I don't skip I don't even like skim over parts that I'm like, oh, this is boring. I want to get to the fun action or, you know, cool stuff and you know interests me. I go through it, and listen to it all. They all hold key parts of the entire story. All right. So <clears throat> after the worst book in the series, I'm sure a lot of people will agree with that. We will come to, which is book number. Ten, I believe. Let's see. I'm pretty sure Knife of Dreams book number ten, and we are right, people. No, we're wrong. I'm sorry. Knife of, <laughs> Knife of Dreams is book number eleven. But hey, all right. So Knife Knife of Dreams is a really good book. I like it. Uh, this is also the last book that. Uh, Robert Jordan actually wrote himself before he passed. So, and and this is also when he got back to regular form. Like he wasn't in a slog anymore. Was what people you know say like Crossroads Twilight was hot garbage. A lot of people thought. I mean, it's great in the Will of Time sense, but I mean it. It had, you know, this was like so much better. I, I'd, I'd say, this would be B, for me. Uh, I really do like Knife of Dreams. All right, Gathering Storm, man, Gathering Storm is good. This is the first book that Brandon Sanderson co-wrote after Robert Jordan's passing, and he did an amazing job. I mean, there are a few things that you can like tell. You know, they have different writing styles. But, oh man, it flows so nicely. Like, you, 
you're truly it doesn't bother you it, it it's not a problem I mean, that's all I can say that's the best way I can say it. like it doesn't feel like an issue at all all the characters feel the exact same there are a few gripes I have but I mean other than that man <clears throat> I'd say A for the Gathering Storm alright so my third favorite book Towers of Midnight man this book is where Zen Ran makes his appearance. This whole scene of Ran, you know, transforming into what he becomes is just amazing. I mean, enough to bring you to tears and just everything that happens after that. I mean, Perrin's there to witness it. You kind of see it through two eyes. You kind of see it through Ran's and Perrin's. And I mean, just from that moment, Rand is like a totally different person, and it's super, super cool. And like, yeah, he's like very zen and meta, and like, I don't know, he's, he truly takes on the persona that Jesus, that you would imagine Jesus being, or how Jesus is portrayed, being very humble and, you know, kind and caring. It's kind of really, it's really cool. I mean, it's not kind of, it's super cool. I like that a lot. <clears throat> All right, and then the last book, Memory and Light, <laughs> is an amazing book as well. Man, I almost truly want to put this at S. Should I? Should I, Kingless? I think, holy cow. Give me time to think, guys. I truly need to think about this. I'm going to go S. Sorry. I got to do it. <laughs> there are too many amazing scenes in this book. I mean, there's so much stuff that happens in this book that's just badass. I have to put it in S. So, yeah, I mean, here you go, guys. This right here. Is my ranking for the Will of Tom books. Oh, I, I'm sorry about that. I forgot one. <laughs> forgot New Spring. I am sorry. Let's go. New Spring. New Spring's good. I mean, yeah, it's it's a good prequel. Uh, <clears throat> I still haven't read it like as like it being the first book. I always read it in between, as in the order it was published. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say I'd put New Spring C. I mean, I don't. It's cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. All right, so this is it, guys. This is what I'm working with. I mean, feel free to tell me what you think. If you like the video, you know what I'm going to say. Smash that like button. Give it to me now. I need them likes. I eat them up. I eat them up. That's right, you dirty peasants. I mean, if you got something bad to say about my list, bite it. All right, guys. Peace.
to my